When you wake up to the reality of the nature of government, it's easy to fall for the temptation of being afraid. It's easy to think, wow, the world isn't the way I thought it was. There are people who wield just an exorbitant amount of power in the world. There are people who pull the levers of society, who pull the strings on the politicians, often derided as puppets. There is a power in what some would call the superclass, the string pullers, the operators of the machinery of society. And it's really tempting to think, well, I'm so disempowered. I am so, I am so helpless. I am so just at the mercy of those who have come before. I am at the mercy of those who command the trigger pullers, those who issue the orders to the enforcement class. It's easy to be tempted by that way of thinking. It's easy to fall into that and think that that's all there is to it. That it's a matter of us or them. That we have to fight. That we have to beat them. That the new world order will not have its way because we are going to be in the streets with pitchforks and gold coins. But if you actually examine the perhaps philosophical implication of that understanding of the world, uh, if you truly go to the bottom of the rabbit hole, a new world becomes possible. And not because of any differing understanding of reality in terms of the way government works. But this is one place where the study of economics as it relates to liberty is so essential and so illuminating. The Austrian field in particular as a methodology, as, a, as a, a, an understanding of human interactions. Because unlike all other traditional schools of economics where professors and paid stooges wax poetic of all the different things you can accomplish through various mechanisms of government intervention in the free market. There is a founding in praxeology in the Austrian school of economics. That is the nature of human decisions. That is the understanding of human motives. And when you learn to look at economics through this lens, through the basic understanding that is shared by philosophical libertarianism and any form of, of Austrian economics, the implication of the simplest idea that human prosperity, human will, is best served in a capitalist system, perhaps capitalism is not the word we want to use to describe the ideal of the free market that we as libertarians are advocating, but that system or that society in which every human interaction is voluntary. And when I first started studying Austrian economics and thinking, well, all voluntary interactions, well, certainly that would include a marriage, right? And you might think, well, that's, that's kind of a crude way of looking at such a meaningful relationship as a marriage, certainly that's not an economic transaction. But why not? Is it not a contractual agreement? Just because it is one based on not a specific desire for a material good or a particular commercial service, <laughs> certainly there is a voluntary exchange of values that is the core of what a romantic relationship is, or a friendship, or a casual conversation on a street corner. A voluntary exchange of value. 
perhaps one that is served by best not being denominated in dollars, but an exchange of value nonetheless. And when you then understand this, or take this understanding of the world and apply it to monetary policy, and you look at the Federal Reserve and you understand what a scam that represents. In a way, the powers that be would like the people who see what the racket is to believe that it is some great frightening thing when it is just a man behind the curtain. When it is really, while it does represent certain horrendous threats to your life and liberty, really not that significant. Perhaps the masses, those so many awoken intellectual libertarians would decry as the sheeple, perhaps it really is rationally ignorant for them to remain ignorant of the ways of government. Perhaps they have realized something that so many of us tend to forget which is that there is so much more to life than that which can be enumerated in dollars. There is so much more to life than that which can ever be touched by government. For all of the things that they can make illegal, for all of the ways that those who apply violence to society can make people's lives miserable, the human experience is still a beautiful, incredible thing. And when you understand economics from that perspective that some might call crude of me to try to examine all voluntary relationships from that perspective of the capitalist ideal of that voluntary exchange. Perhaps that broader view of what constitutes value, what can be included in understanding of economics, can put the racket that is government in perspective. And we can remember that there is much more to life than standing up to fighting the man. Or I guess, as the Spaniards would have said, we don't live to work, we work to live. And I hope that similarly, as a libertarian, or as libertarians, we are not given to the temptation of living to fight for liberty and forgetting to enjoy it. Oh my gosh, it's a revolution! That was just the start. We've got some hashes, so most of these are going to be a bubble extraction hash, y'all. Please lend me your wisdom. I have watched in awe as you have grown from stubble to what you have become.